Hello again everyone, Style and Steve from the Historian Podcast, back once again with another video review. Long-awaited and uh, somewhat anticipated, I hope, at least uh, according to Matt LeDrew, which, damn you LeDrew, you've got me buying toys again, which I fully intended to do, but I just haven't had the uh, resources, shall we say, in the past few months to continually go out and buy new toys, but I had a little bit extra, so I decided to go pick up another micro figure package, and... Another Titan vinyl figure. This is from the 10th Doctor collection, 2008 to 2010. But of course, I also have the character building little mini not Lego figure as well. These are, of course, blind bag reviews, so I've got my handy scissors here. And I'm going to check out and see what I've got today because I have no idea. This bag is completely sealed. So, making sure I don't chop through the little card that's inside, carefully. Go ahead and chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it. And I should be able to tear from there. Okay, good. So, first, of course, we have the menu of whatever we have in the, ba in the bag. We have an oud. Whoa. These are a little more than I thought. Okay, we have Madame Kavarian. We have a Santeran Trooper, we have a Vashta Narada, we have an Ood, the Eleventh Doctor, River Song, Cyber Controller, we have Rory Williams, there's Rory, we have a Jadoon, a Dalek, and a Handbot, which is kind of cool. And on the back we've got the playsets, we've got the Buildable TARDIS, we've got the Dalek Spaceship, the Silent Time Machine, the Dematerializing TARDIS, the Doctor in Berlin, and the Girl Who Waited miniset. Now, I'm going to try and get a few of these sets, actually, uh, between eBay and some relatives in England. I may try around Christmas time to get a couple of these and see what I can't review. So that's enough of that. In the meantime, we take the bag and we dump the bag and we see a Dalek with no instructions, but we know generally how a Dalek works. We have all the pieces of a Dalek, so this should not be that hard to do to assemble a little Dalek. The body goes on, head goes here, and the eyepiece, forgive my big hand, runs under my camera, and I get the little headpiece back, and there we go, we'll put his plunger over here, is that the right side for the plunger? I don't know if the plungers are arbitrary or if they're not. It fits better over there. Does it matter? Does it really matter? Let me see. Oh, there's the plunger there. And his little gun will fit in. And of course, his vision is impaired right now, so let us unimpair his vision. And we have a little Dalek. And I'll just bring him in for closer inspection, if my camera wants to focus. Focus! Here we have the Dalek with the little nubs, of course. Some pretty decent detail on this for, for being such a small figure. And the advantage of it being a, uh, a not-Lego figure... Let me see, does he get better focused that way? The advantage of him being a not-Lego figure, he's not supposed to really... Well, he's compatible. We can see he's compatible with anything. But uh, the advantage is, aside the fact that his head turns, which is just the benefit of that, the headpiece does turn, but as well, and we've seen it a couple of times, I should be able to get this. Whoops. Stay on. Oh, no, it's on a four plug. I thought it was just one plug. Okay, I thought the body would turn, too. No, it's just the headpiece, so that's the only articulation we get. But it's nice to get articulation with a figure so small. Uh, have I got anyone else around? I've got a Cyberman, so we can compare him in size to a Cyberman. Now, of course, he doesn't have a base to stand on. He doesn't need a base to stand on because he has his own base. But you can see they're lined up, and the Dalek is... actually not in bad scale with that Cyberman. They're kind of a, a neat little pairing. Good little Who villains. And, uh, yeah, that's the character-building Dalek. I'll just... Lay him over here to the side with the Cyberman, and we will get to the main event. We have the Titans 
vinyl figure blind bag. Now, I did cheat a little bit when I got this Titan blind box figure, because if you have these figures, if you've ever handled these boxes, you know that... A little, little beat up there. You know that these boxes, you can sort of guess and cheat by weight. Uh, the figures themselves are not very heavy, and if the box weighs more than the other boxes, you can bet damn well you've got something good, either a Dalek, possibly a Davros, you could have a TARDIS. You don't know, you might even have a Weeping Angel. But the heavier boxes are the ones I tend to go for. And of course you can see the ones that are in this set. We have the Tenth Doctor in the blue and the brown suit. We've got a Dalek, a Weeping Angel, a Cyber Leader, a couple of TARDISes, a Mystery Doctor over here. Uh, we've got a Bronze Dalek, a Dalek, a Clockwork Robot, the Adipose, a Sontera, and another Clockwork Robot, Davros himself, and a Vash the Narada. So, this box is completely and still happily sealed. So, live on camera for my Hustorian audience, I'm going to open the box. I hope I'm going to open the box. If I have the strength in my hands, and we know what's coming, in here we have a bag. So the box is no longer needed. We have a Doctor Who bag, and I feel already a solid piece of plastic in here. So I'm reasonably certain I've got a one piece of something. So let's go ahead and snip the top off. And inside we have a bronze Dalek. And if I jump the bag, or I reach in, there we go, his accessories. Now this is the second Dalek I, I've actually gotten. The bronze da Dalek actually looks nice. Uh, I have a Power Ranger Dalek. I have a red drone Dalek out on a shelf. He's not in this room right now. Uh, let's go. Now I had trouble with these last time. This was something that annoyed the hell out of me, but this time the ball joints look to be a little better. Uh, and if you can force it in right... And actually, I'm going to try and get these in, and I'll be right back. And boom. After much forcing and fiddling uh, to get these in, these are very soft, pliable plastic. But they are on ball joints, and do move around. Got a little bit of a range of motion as far as the ball joint will go. The arm gets a little bit different, difficult, and the eye stock but they do bend really easy, but they snap back fairly well. And of course the head does have limited rotation. And that's about it really for the Dalek. And while I was putting his ball joints in, I went and got my other Dalek, which actually is blue. I thought he was red, but he's just been sitting on my shelf. And he's the blue scientist Dalek. And uh, he looks more cartoony than the bronze Dalek here. Uh, I like, actually, the bronze a lot better than I like the blue. The blue is almost too cartoony for me. I know it's a Power Ranger, but it's still... It's more cartoony. It's too cartoony for me. And I like the style on this bronze one better. So I'll take the blue one out. And uh, Titan on the bottom. And the Doctor Who BBC logo. I like this bronze Dalek. He is really nice. He's cool. He's a bronze Dalek. I have two bronze Daleks. I have a larger Dalek and a mini Dalek, and they are very cool. So, that's going to do it for this review. Uh, I am Stylin' Steve, of course, of the Historian Podcast. You can check me out on the website, thehistorian.ca. Drop me an email, thehistorian at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter, at thehistorian. New episodes coming soon to uh, the Historian website, and I can also be found in iTunes and on the Stitcher app. So, uh, have fun finding me there, and until next time, and when I get some more toys... Uh, I'll see you around the vortex.